So this year's WWDC, Apple definitely put Mac gaming at the forefront of their presentation. They announced a brand new, much faster chip, three AAA games coming to Mac, as well as a brand new graphics API that's going to improve compatibility and performance for years to come. However, one thing that they kept close to their chest was the fact that they are radically redesigning the way that controllers work. So macOS Ventura will not only have support for niche gaming peripherals like steering wheels and pedals, but it's also getting some new accessibility features like controller mapping profiles, as well as something called the buddy controller system. So today you're going to be testing out some of these new features on macOS Ventura and I'm also going to be showing you some cool new changes with the way that Joy-Cons work on this new framework. So make sure to watch until the end of the video to check that out. So if you haven't subscribed already then please consider subscribing and you'll be able to keep up to date with the latest Mac gaming news. So here I've got the macOS Ventura developer beta loaded up onto my MacBook Air with the M1 chip. So if we go to the system settings menu here, we're gonna have a brand new settings menu, which is more kind of iPad-like with the sidebar on the left and then the menu items on the right. So if you head to the Bluetooth menu now, you can see that this has been completely redesigned. So here I'm gonna pair my Xbox Series controller by turning it on and then pressing the pair button and still it starts flashing. You're gonna see that it's gonna pop up on this menu straight away. We'll just press connect. But we actually have some new options now. If we scroll down on the left sidebar, we can see this new section here called game controllers. So with this connected Xbox wireless controller, we can press on options here. I have a new menu here that allows us to rebind all of the buttons on the controller. So if you wanted to rebind your keys, say you wanted to do your A button to be a right trigger pull instead, what you could do is go ahead and create a new profile. I'm gonna go down a profile section here, press plus. We're gonna call this the test profile and we're gonna set the A button. I'm gonna change it to the right trigger. And if I go to my options menu of this controller and I change this to test, that means that every time I press the A button, it's gonna be doing a right trigger pull instead. So this is pretty much infinitely customizable and really cool thing is that these profiles are transferable. So let's say I've got my Xbox One wireless controller. I'm gonna go ahead and pair this now via Bluetooth. So I've paired the second controller and despite the fact that this is an Xbox One controller, it's still being displayed here as Xbox wireless controller. So how do we know which one is which? Well, there is a new identify button now. So I can press this one. Let's go make that rumble and this one as well has made this one rumble too. So now I can figure out which one is which just from this menu. And I can apply the profile that I set here onto here. So I can go to options and I can change my profile from default to test. This means that when I press the A button, it's gonna be pressing the right trigger instead. So the other cool feature here is called buddy controller. So if we scroll down on game controllers, we can go ahead and combine the inputs of two controllers together. So buddy controller basically allows two controllers to act as one. So if player one is struggling on a game, then I can actually pair my controller as player one as well. And I can help to complete the game with that having to swap controllers around. And it's really easy to set up. Once you've got two controllers paired, press the plus button here, and then we can go ahead and select the main gamer and then also the buddy as well. And then we press done. And so basically this means that we've got a combined wireless controller on player one. So here I'm playing the game Towerfall Ascension. So here player one is being controlled by this wireless controller here. So I can press jump and that's gonna work. And this controller is also paired via buddy controller. And I can also control player one like this. And this is a fantastic accessibility feature. It means that player one can continue playing whilst player two is assisting. Or if you're a disabled player and you wanna use two controllers at once, for example, you could use one hand with this and you can control this controller with your feet, then this is all possible to do now. We also have the ability to pair Nintendo Switch Joy-Con controllers as well. And it's pretty simple to do. You just press the pair button here and it's gonna appear on our Bluetooth menu. Here it's showing up the Joy-Con right button and press connect. And this is now connected. I can pair the other one the same way. And now this is pair the Joy-Cons as two separate controllers. Now in the current iOS 16 developer beta, which is for iPhones, it's actually possible to combine these two controllers into one. All you have to do is to hold the screenshot and the home button together. And then after a few seconds, they'll merge into one controller and you can demerge them just by pressing these two buttons again and they'll be two separate controllers again. However, it's not currently in macOS Ventura, but I'm sure it's gonna come in the near future. So we also have added support on macOS Ventura for some of the most popular racing wheels. For example, Logitech's G920 and also G29. This includes the steering wheel, the pedals and the shifter. And these have been supported on macOS before. However, with the advent of the M1 chip, many games stopped detecting these controllers. And so having it explicitly mentioned on Apple's website as a feature of macOS Ventura is gonna be a welcome addition. So support for niche gaming peripherals is all but useless unless we actually have games to run them on. Thankfully at WWDC, one of the AAA games announced was Grid Legends. And this is a racing game that's gonna be coming out to Apple Silicon Macs later this year. And this is the perfect type of game to play on your Mac with brand new steering wheel. So all of these new changes that Apple have been making to game controllers is surely a sign that Apple have a renewed interest in gaming on the Mac. And hopefully this is just the beginning of more and more controller support and more and more games coming for the Mac in the future. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please like, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.